So good afternoon, morning, and evening to everybody. Uh, hope everyone's doing good today, keeping safe during these uh, interesting times. For those of you who have not had a chance to meet me before, uh, my name is Jonathan Willett. I'm from Canada, but at the moment I am based in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a doctoral candidate in the archaeology faculty. My main specialty is generally uh, early Islamic slash early medieval up to the Mongol period coinage in the Middle East and Central Asia uh, into China as well. But for today, I'm going to take things to a different part of the world uh, due to something that I encountered relatively recently that I found quite fascinating. Uh, a point of order, if at any point I'm speaking too fast or I freeze, just wave, say, say something, please. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, a couple months back, I was going through a large bag of world coins, just kind of the ones you always get at merchants where it's a grab bag of coins. And this coin came up and I thought, oh, Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, it must be some sort of coin from France. Great. I, I thought it was weird that it had palm trees on it, but I was like, okay, why not? And then I flipped it over and I went, Republic d'Haïti. Wow, that's uh, that's something. And then this started a whole thing of starting to look into this. I'm like, oh, Haiti used this slogan on their coinage. So I thought I'd explore that. So with that in mind, I'm going to go through some thoughts about the use of uh, French slogans, and we could call it French nationalism in French colonial coinage and especially post-colonial coinage. So of course we are talking about uh, this modern slogan, uh, Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, which as Peter has pointed out, uh, roughly translates to liberty, equality, and brotherhood. Uh, depending on your direct translation. So a little bit of uh, background for those unfamiliar. Uh, it was first used by Maximilien Robespierre in his speech uh, on the organization of the National Guard, or en français, uh, Discours sur l'organisation des gardes nationales, uh, on December 5th, 1790. Uh, this is, of course, the start of the French Revolution. We see a slight variation then used uh, by the constitutional monarchy for two years, uh, la nation, la loi et le roi, the nation, law, and the king. And of course they did use it uh, at one point um, for their own coinage, you can see here, la nation, la loi, et le roi. And of course only lasted two years, so we don't have many copies of this. And of course, 1848, uh, during the February revolution, is officially adopted as the model of France and is still used to this day. We also have a slight variation that was used during the Vichy period, uh, travailler, famille, patrie. Uh, basically, work, family, and the fatherland. That's here, fa family, sorry, father, fatherland, depending on how you want to translate it. So to look through a brief chronology, uh, I'm not going to show you every single example of it used in French coinage because we'd be here all day because it appears on almost all of their coinage. I'm also only talking about uh, kind of circulating coinage, not special editions, because when we talk about special editions, then we get stuff about the World Cup from other countries as well. Uh, you get you know random coins from China that feature this phrase, which is kind of a special circumstance. So we have these early ones uh, where we see Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité come up. This one is 1896, and this continues basically until now with the Euro. Uh, you see some variation. Uh, you also have, during the Vichy period, they switched to the Travailler, Famalier, Patrier, and that, that only lasts for a little bit of time. But there's this continued use of this tripartite slogan all throughout. And you can see it keeps going. Now, Additionally, you also see uh, the use of you know, France as a woman, uh, the personification of France used, and then also this rooster. And this will come up a little bit later. 
So with this in mind, now we have to switch over to the colonial period. Now we have to understand there's basically two colonial periods within uh, France. I'm mostly going mostly to be focusing on Africa, uh, but obviously it encompasses the world. You have the first French colonial period from 1534 to 1814, the, the stuff in this color blue, the lighter blue. And then you have the second French colonial empire uh, in the darker blue. And you could see there is a, a big difference there between the, the two. Um, the, the second seems to focus more on Africa. And this is also why I'm going to focus a little more on the African coinage as opposed to elsewhere. So I'm going to talk about two countries in particular where this kind of came up and where this caught my interest. Uh, the first one being the country of Djibouti uh, along the Horn of Africa. So first colonized in 1883, gained their independence in 1977. Uh, their official language is French and Arabic, and we will see this coming up quite a bit, uh, the use of French as a official language in uh, post-colonial French colonies. They have a population of a little under a million. Uh, you can see with the terrain, the way it is, how that's not a surprise. And their current motto is Unite, Egalite, Pei, uh, Unity, Equality, and Peace. Now with their coinage, when it was referred to as French Somaliland, uh, 1948 to 1967, you can see they follow a very French design uh, with some sort of springbuck. It says uh, Côte Française de Somalie on both sides. There's no sort of slogans. In the second period for them, we are the French territory of the Afars and the uh, Assess. Again, same sort of pattern. You get, again, the Springbuck, there's some camels. It's still, there's no slogan. And this is still with, within French colonial uh, domain. The second they become independent, 1977, they drop that French imagery. They keep the animals but they also then add unite, egalite, or unity, equality, and peace. This only starts to appear once they become independent. The second country I wanna focus on um, is one that I've already mentioned, uh, Haiti, uh, co colonized in, technically, if you wanna go from when Columbus landed, 1492, but as a French colony, 1659. Now they gained independence in 1804. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of the history of Haiti just because they go through several empires and kind of political groups and occupations and it gets quite complicated at various points. Their official language is being French and Haitian Creole. They have a population of uh, just over 11 million. So quite a large population for a relatively small area. And their motto, which you will find quite interesting is a uh, union fait la force. Um, but they also quite often use that liberté, égalité, fraternité. Now with their coinage, uh, when they first become independent, there is no slogan. On the, actually you see it there a little bit, the liberté, égalité. They, they adopt a little bit. Their second coinage, uh, no coins were produced. They only used paper money at that stage. In the third form of coinage, which has gone from 1872 to now, they've now started to use this liberté, égalité, fraternité as a regular thing in all of their coinage. Uh, they don't mint yearly, um, but when they do mint, they use this, this slogan. Uh, and Shashwat, to answer your question, yes, uh, French still in these countries is uh, the major language. I will speak about that a little bit at the end because I've got a, gra a graph to explain some of that. Um, and But back to our coins from Haiti, uh, you can see that they really lean into that terminology after independence. Uh, we also have these, uh, what I call the war rooster coins, uh, Money de Guerre, uh, minted between 1942 and 1943. 
you've got on one side, Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, and then Honneur, Patrie, and the Cross de Lorraine, uh, which was a common symbol in France and used especially for uh, the Free French Forces and uh, Charles de Gaulle. And on the other side, you have the name of the country and the rooster. So we've got Madagascar, we've got uh, Afrique Equatoriale Francais, uh, what would now be Central Africa, and then Cameroon. This is obviously some sort of a uh, war effort due, due to the timing and the, the use of the cross, um, but there is seems to be some sort of unifying thing of all these countries with this coinage. There also is this coin, which I can only find one example of it from a uh, French Cochin China, uh, where I think it was only minted once. And you can tell, obviously, they attempted to do some sort of coin with a hole in it. If it was only minted once, I suspect it didn't work very well. Um, but it's still, you get this liberté, égalité, fraternité. Uh, there's a couple other variations that we see in various places. Uh, Rwanda uses it on their coat of arms. You can't see it very well, but it comes up there. Uh, the Congo, you see Justice Pays Travailler. Uh, Burundi uses it, Unité Travailler Progress. Uh, Guyana uses it, Travailler Justice Solidarité. And even Eritrea, which wasn't a French colony at all. Uh, Liberté, sorry, Liberty, Equality, Justice. They use an English version but it's still following along, along that same pattern. And then interestingly enough, some countries have gone completely different. They've gone a different direction. So you see now uh, with the, with the uh, CFA, the various uh, African monetary zones, they've stopped using this entirely. Uh, you can see they focus a lot more on animals, names, that sort of thing, imagery. Uh, Madagascar is actually an interesting example because they are still using a tripartite motto, but depending on the year it's minted, it's actually slight variation. Uh, I'm, I haven't listed all of them, and I'm, my Mal Malagasy is not very good, to say the least, so I'm not going to try and butcher that. But you can see that there is still this influence, and considering we go from that World War II French coinage to now them still using this... Uh, process I find quite fascinating. Now, languages was mentioned. So I have a little chart here of countries in Africa, uh, their mottos, and you could see almost all of them are a variation of this uh, tripartite motto, even though many of these are not former French colonies. The ones that have used it on their coins I've highlighted, so uh, Burundi, Djibouti, uh, you've got the Congo, Rwanda, Central African Republic, Cameroon, Chad, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gabon, Guyana, Madagascar. There is definitely a pattern emerging here. Ah, the French Polynesian coins. That is a good question. Why don't they? And this is one of um, the things, the reason why I pointed out some of the past ones. Okay, I can't go back. It's okay, we can go back later if we have to. Um, why is it that some countries have decided to continue to use this sort of phrasing and some have not? And why is it that even French Polynesian coins, which there's still a lot of control from you know, the, the mainland, we'll call it for lack of better terms, they are not using it. Why? I don't know. Uh, this is the the simple simple answer. Okay, let's skip the the, the finishing slide there. That's okay. Um, what I want to highlight though, uh, to finish off though, is the idea of what does this all mean? Uh, there's a lot of discussion now about decolonize decolonizing archaeology, um, deco decolonizing the way we look at history. But we have this, all these countries where the colonial impact is still felt, uh, either within their society, 
within their language, within their political spheres. And we see from a numismatic point of view, it coming out in the public. Uh, obviously, it's in coins. As well, these coins are not minted. Some of them are minted in France, and some of them uh, are actually minted in the UK and the US. So it's not simply a matter of, say, France minting the coinage and then sending it out to their former colonies. There, there are other countries influencing this. Uh, so thank you uh, for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions you, you may have. There is one in. But yes, uh, the rooster. So this is a there's an old uh, Gaelic um, origin to the use of rooster in uh, in France, and uh, it's just it's become a symbol of the country. Uh, that's why they still use it on their football jerseys and stuff like that. So it's interesting that it kind of keeps coming up. On, on their coin engine, and especially during that war period where there's maybe a desire to kind of unify everyone under one banner. Uh, there is another remark from Anthony Governor that I am not really uh, uh, ready to understand, um, Anthony. Why did you Why did you just switch on your mic and uh, ask things uh, and ask your question uh, um, live? Yes. Uh, thanks. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfectly. Okay. Great. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. I think it's it, it's great. I uh, enjoy the uh, uh, the collection of uh, world coins, especially the colonial coins. Uh, I'd just like to find out from you if you have any information about France and the Caribbean. Okay, I'm based in South Africa, but I'm, I'm asking specifically about Caribbean. And I do know that uh, France in the, in the early 1700s or late 1700s issued a lot of copper coins, which were sols. And uh, a vast majority of these were counter stamped with an oval punch, RF, which was for Republic of Francais. And many of these counter stamped pieces ended up uh, in the American colonies where they circulated at the value of one cent. But uh, because of their presence in America, I mean, these chains were uh, actually considered as part of the American coinage. Uh, do you have any? Uh, information about that not really uh one of the first things i had looked at when i was thinking french colonial coinage was in north america because obviously canada uh part of it was a french colony at one point but i think a lot of that though predates the the heavy use of that of the the creation of this tripartite um phrase so it's quite possible then that that's why this stuff would have escaped uh, that usage that would be my my best guess. There's some okay. more stuff in the chat now. There's some more stuff in the chat. To... Uh, uh, Paul Stevens, I agree. Uh, about the colonial influence. Uh, this is something we see a large portion of African countries still using French as their, as basically the lingua franca um, due to being uh, former French colonies. Uh, um, for the two French co Indian colonial coins, they've got the Gaelic rooster, but do they have that tripartite? So I think we can kind of split these into different types of imagery. You have some that use the rooster, some, yeah, so not the slogan. So some that just use the rooster, some that use the, the slogan. Uh, if we looked at the uh, French uh, Cocajin China, no, they have the slogan, but they don't have the rooster, but they do have the personification of France. 
So I, I do ponder it at various times if they try different things to see kind of what works. Okay, well, I, I have a, um, a remark, uh, which is very close to the one that uh, Paul Stevens has made uh, on uh, colonial influences. Um, and uh, let's put Haiti to the side because they're they're a bit different from the rest and concentrate on the um, uh, on the slogan itself um, the if you live in France as I do you will find that slogan everywhere it is on schools it is on post offices it is on the mairie where uh, you have the yeah, the city councils uh, the slogan in my mind is not so much a collection of letters that form the slogan but it is a symbol just as much as the maple leaf is a symbol for Canada, um, the Ashoka column is a symbol for India, and so on. And uh, as such, you find uh, that if you would want to find uh, a symbol for Britain, then, um, well, no, you don't find Britannia, you find the Union Jack. Uh, and you will see that after their independence, a number of British colonies actually used the Union Jack in their symbolism and especially in the flag. And if I'm not mistaken, Australia and New Zealand still have Union Jack in their flags. So I see the use of that sort of symbols today as um, a sort of acknowledgement that these countries are at peace with their former uh, colonizers in the sense that um, uh, they, they have no frustration from the path. Um, this is uh, maybe a bit too much of a generalization, but I, I, I give it to you for contemplation uh, and get back to Haiti. In Haiti, you will find um, in a micro sort of environment, what you will find in all of South America as a macro sort of envir environment, which is um, the, their reaction on the Napoleonic period. In the, um, uh, just after the Napoleonic period, South America um, was, um, uh, getting rid of the uh, the Spanish control and the, uh, the countries in South America became independent. And as such, uh, they had um, much admiration for the French Revolution. Uh, it was the sort of thing that they were uh, using as their model. Uh, now in, uh, of course, the, the other thing that pleaded for that was that France was in Spain. So that, that it, it just came in handy. But uh, you will find that all over South America, uh, coins were um, minted in the Paris Mint. They uh, were using French designers. And you can find uh, French uh, post-Napoleonic influences in the law. And you will find that some of them also have slogans with three words. Uh, the, yeah, the influence is... Uh, is pretty obvious. But again, uh, Haiti is a bit of an exception because Haiti um, had a, um, a French colonial past. And what you see happening in Haiti is that uh, the, the symbolism of uh, the French Revolution became two-headed. On the one hand, you have some of the more democratic rulers of Haiti who use it as uh, this is a revolutionary country. We are a revolutionary country. Therefore, we feel close to France. But others, um, notably the more dictatorial ones, uh, like to, um, uh, to see themselves as, bless you, as Napoleon. Uh, they, were, uh, they, they were calling their country an empire. Uh, they were giving themselves titles that were reminiscent of the Napoleonic period. So you, uh, you have a, a really special case in Haiti, but it's uh, it's very interesting never, uh, nevertheless. Yeah, Haiti is an interesting uh, case as well, because when you look at uh, accounts from the start of the Haitian Revolution, it coincides with the French Revolution, because there was a, basically a thought from um, 
the various factions within Haiti of, great, the French Revolution, this is going to help us too. You know, we're going to get some freedoms too. And it didn't really pan out that way. So then they went, well, wait a minute, why aren't we getting these freedoms? You guys in the mainland get these freedoms, why don't we get them? And that actually, and then that leads into the Napoleonic era when basically it goes from bad to worse, depending on your perspective.